Thank you, Andy. Um, Andy is the um, Vice President of Research at Tenuity. I didn't get to properly introduce him. And there were a lot of really great insights in that presentation. So um, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with Poppy. There were a couple questions that came in for her. Is that all right with you? Okay. Um, Poppy, there was a, a question here. Um, why, why do you say LinkedIn isn't great for conversions? People would adamantly disagree. <laughs> um, so primarily it's due to budget. Often a lot of the clients that I work with, LinkedIn needs an awful lot of budget in order to get that to that point of conversion. Um, and often I found that that buying cycle of the B2B place, like often these customers take years to warm up and build a relationship with an organization. It all depends on the price point of the product or service that you're offering. Um, something that has a cheaper price point is more likely to succeed than something, um, you know, that, that may be like a, a full blown contract. Um, so I'm not saying that it never works from a conversion perspective, but I think it's really important that you set the expectations with clients first and kind of get them to to know that it's not really going to be driving or the main driver of your leads, um, but use it as, as an opportunity to warm up and increase that brand awareness um, on the platform. That's how I've, I've done it. I'm not saying that it's not impossible to generate conversions, but I think it's just important that you set the expectations from the off. Okay, and we have um, another one. What are the most important metrics to report back to clients? Um, so this will depend on the client and the kind of tactic of your campaign. So, um, you know, they might just be looking for the top level. They might just be looking for, you know, how many clicks to the site have they had? What's their click-through rate like? Or they might be looking for more detailed information about what what users are engaging with on the site so what pages that they're viewing um it all will really depend on the client and also what that marketing goal is as well what's that one primary metric that you've kind of said that will be your driving force so it will really vary client on client some love all the data and the insights and as much as possible others will just want top level how many clicks how much have i spent this week um and yeah it will just depend on that client so um yeah there's no right or wrong answer um but yeah there's just a few bits to be aware of Okay, so um, moving moving on to Andy, um, what were you most surprised about in um, paid search in Q4? Um, I think so. We we still expected you know the key periods like Black Friday and Cyber Monday to be a big a big driver because again you know folks are so cost conscious heading into the season. But uh, I think what uh, was surprising was the extent to which it outperformed other periods. Um, you know, we really saw really muted growth in, in terms of the, the periods before and after the, that core Cyber 5 stretch. So I think the extent to which it outpaced, um, you know, those other periods um, was was a bit surprising. Now, obviously, this is certainly going to vary brand to brand since different advertisers run different promotional activities um, at, at different times. But um yeah, I would say that was probably the most surprising. It's just the extent to which it outpaced because, you know, again, we thought it would be a big period, but not not to the level that we ended up seeing. Were th were there any um, any specific um, verticals that jumped out at you? Um, I mean, certainly. Um... I mean, we're we're mostly retail, retail and e-com. We, you know, we obviously play in, in a lot of different verticals, but um, I, I would say, uh, especially as it pertains to, you know, what was impacting different categories within retail, um, you know, it was just totally different situations in terms of, um, you know. Uh, product availability and, and demand, uh, comparing things like apparel and sports and recreation to. Um, other categories like you know automotive or beauty where again we saw those huge disparities in average order value between those types of categories and so i think a lot of advertisers in the different product categories had found themselves in different situations in terms of you know what they had a lot of stock of and um you know what where consumer demand was and so um yeah i think that's going to be an important part of 2023 is you know a lot of advertisers are going to have to figure out where that happy medium point is in terms of you know what they should be stocking uh and trying to you know again you know not get in that situation where they might be overstocked and things that aren't seeing you know the same demand as a couple of years ago great that was a really good insight 